I don't know, is it just me or a gaming keyboard is becoming way too expensive? Definitely not just me. What's up guys, I'm Dimitri with Howard Canucks and today we have a really interesting keyboard from Logitech, the G915 Lightspeed Wireless. I feel like Logitech is setting the new standard for what the low profile keyboard should be in terms of the base, in terms of the switches and the keycaps and they've done a lot of things right with this board and despite my favoritism towards TKL boards, um, you know, because this thing is absolutely massive. I don't like that form factor, but many people do in terms of our Twitter poll. As you can see here, majority of people prefer still full size gaming boards for gaming. And also an interesting fact, the sales for full size boards versus TKL are like 90% for a full size board from Logitech. So it makes sense for them to focus on larger boards that people will actually buy instead of catering towards the really loud minority that want TKL, including myself, and I am hoping that we'll see a low profile TKL version of this, but right now full size makes sense in terms of what Logitech is selling and what are people requesting. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, there we go. This is the Excel I'm looking for. Welcome the O11 XL by Lee & Lee, stepping it up with upgrades all around for enthusiast builds with perfect radiator spacing at the bottom on the side and the top with now a slightly wider main chamber for taller GPUs and rear exhaust area. The second chamber will hide all your cables and house hot swappable drives for a complete package all around. This is the O11 XL by Lee & Lee, giving you room to grow. As you guessed it, based on the intro, the price point I would say is the caveat and would be the main turnoff from the mainstream consumer market because at $250, it's expensive. The G815, which is the wired version, is $199 and has a USB pass-through port and is not wireless, so the wireless convenience is the $50 premium. Now I wanna focus my attention on the low profile nature of something like this because They've done a fantastic job in terms of minimizing the actual frame size at the bottom, and that is because of the new GL switches. They come in the three flavors, the linear, the tactile, and the clicky. As you can see in this shot here, we have the low profile switch on the right, and the height difference is pretty significant versus your standard mechanical switch on the left, and that is what allows them to create something that profile, like the G915 or A15. These have been co-developed with Kale, and it's great to have three variations of this type of switch right at the start, but Kale also has their own variations of the switch that we'll hopefully see more widely available in other keyboards too. This whole low profile movement is starting to grow. As for the specs, they all have a 50 gram actuation force, 1.5 millimeter actuation point, and 2.7 millimeter travel distance. And that for a low profile keyboard is pretty incredible for your tactile and clicky switches. It feels really nice, while on the linear switch, I'm almost expecting for it to be a little bit more travel distance because I'm guessing I'm used to that. As for the actual base of the keyboard, it is thinner than my iPhone with the case on it, which is pretty incredible. I do like the aluminum frame and the little curved sidelines, but the edges of the frame are really sharp. So if you're doing any flicks, just be careful with the thumbs because uh, it might be painful. Now, some of you may be thinking, what's the point of a low profile keyboard when the base and the actual footprint is so large? And I agree with you. In comparison to my Ducky 12 SF, like pff, this thing is like more than 2X the size. And that's pretty much because we have additional G keys on the left side, we have five of them so you can record macros and stuff. And the actual forehead of the keyboard is pretty tall to accommodate those additional keys like your profile switches, your macro key, the connectivity and the lighting and the gaming key. And just to give you a comparison of how thin the keyboard is, here it is next to the Ducky 12SF, which is Pretty low profile in my opinion, and here it is next to the Apex Pro, which is slightly larger and taller, but we do have two height adjustments on the 915, and it almost puts it in the same height uh, where the back is to like your standard mechanical keyboard. It does give you a nice height elevation though for typing. When it's completely flat, it almost like feels like it's built into the desk, but when you raise it on that maximum level, it gives you a nice angle uh, of adjustments and typing, it's nice. Also because of this, you do not need the wrist rest because the bottom keys are so low to the desk that when they were trying to see if you need the wrist rest, it would actually cause you fatigue and discomfort. So the desk is your wrist rest. 
I do like the dedicated media controls on the right side, plus a very smooth volume wheel that has no tactility whatsoever. And it seems like there's a bit of a delay between when you actually touch the volume wheel and when that volume appears on screen in Windows, and you can play around with it and see the volume wheel catching up to whatever you set it to. As for the keycaps, they're incredibly low profile, and that is the third point that make the whole low profile nature of this keyboard so good. The frame, the switch, and the keycap. Many of you are probably expecting PBT keycaps for this price point, they're not. However, they're extremely solid and sturdy. There's no flex whatsoever. We have the main key uh, that is shine through, and it's beautiful illumination because of the uh, LED that is right underneath it. However, the second characters are not shine through, therefore they're left blank, which is kind of nice because there is no gradient in the illumination. The issue with the keycaps, however, is that they're almost proprietary and finding replacements is not easy, especially right now with this whole early movement of low profile keyboards and the switches in particular. And and unfortunately, I broke one of the legs on the keycap when I was inserting it back into the switch very gently. I heard a snap. I'm like, oh no. And unfortunately, the end key is now super wobbly, has no stability whatsoever without one of the legs on it. Interestingly, Logitech tells me they've never had one break in their own internal testing. So that's kind of interesting. And if that happens to you, if you are replacing keycaps or like removing them for cleaning or something, that they do have support to send out replacement keys that you can purchase yourself. Just Keep that in mind. By the way, I love the font, super clean, nice boldness. This is the way forward for gaming boards. They also tell us they have a special coating on top of the keycaps to prevent them from wearing out the top layer because of finger oils. I'll keep you guys updated in a few months from now. Make sure to follow us on social media. So the lighting is absolutely beautiful, super bright, vibrant, color accurate to what you set in the software, which is awesome. And my only complaint here would be the M1 to M3 keys, which are your profiles, and they are set to yellow and they're constantly yellow and they don't correspond to user set color. You power on the keyboard with a switch in the top left, you charge it with a micro USB port in the top right, no type C hover, and uh, the battery life on this thing is absolutely insane. You're looking about 1200 hours of continuous usage without any lighting on, and the lighting here, of course, is the culprit for killing battery life. At full brightness, you're looking about 30 hours of continuous usage, or like, you know, a full week on a normal basis. We do have the brick with a low profile USB receiver that has the G915 text on it, which is great. And when you need to charge, you simply unplug the cable, plug it into the keyboard, and uh, the whole system is designed for that receiver to remain somewhere in the vicinity of the keyboard because when you need that micro USB cable, you can simply plug it in. So the wireless aspect is super fantastic, especially for a keyboard that large. Not having a cable to worry about is great. Of course, that comes with the price, but we also have a Bluetooth mode for connecting to other devices, connected to my iPhone literally without any issues so I can switch between Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz on my computer without any issues with a simple click of a button. I do like that we have a macro key on the keyboard itself. So you click that, you select which G key you want first, you type in your command and you click the macro key and once again to record that macro to the G key. Super simple on the fly macro recording without needing the software. And speaking of the software, I really enjoy G Hub, nice and simple UI navigation in terms of setting your presets or customizing your lighting per key and key assignments. We can further customize what those G macro keys do and then the game mode, interestingly, you can disable other keys outside of your Windows key in case you are accidentally constantly pressing them and you don't want to have them be registered in game. This is something you can do now. And so the keyboard in its full state, I feel like is a really good low profile example on the market in terms of the frame, the switches, the keycaps. I don't appreciate the large form factor. I'd like it to be smaller to complement the whole compact nature of it, but that's just my bias. Let me know if you agree. My only complaint here would be the keycap legs where one of them broke and I don't know how. I was very gentle with it and the replacements are not easily found and the volume wheel. Man, this thing is just, it doesn't have any tactility to it and there's that weird lag in Windows. I do appreciate the game mode and disabling certain keys outside of your Windows key. And the only thing that I don't like about the frame are the really sharp corners because of the aluminum frame and where it meets that plastic frame as well. I wish that was rounded instead of the sidelines being rounded. In terms of the switches, I love the tactile and the clicky for gaming. The clicky one in particular, it feels like a softer razor green switch. The clicky point is soft, but it's very pronounced while the browns feel really nice as well. I'm just really used to browns. While the linear, I feel like for my game style, I prefer to have a bit more travel distance for linear switch for my game style, uh, but it's nice to have all three flavors available. 
The new Hydro X series from Corsair is a full water cooling ecosystem with transparent blocks for RGB goodness and built-in flow indicators, with soft and hard tubing available and a full array of fittings so you can design the perfect loop for you. Hydro X by Corsair. Everything's linked below. And so it really comes down to whether or not you want such a low profile keyboard that is also massive. It's kind of like a Cash 22, but hopefully more custom keycaps will be available in the market that you can swap these out in case they break. And um, yeah, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. I am pleased with this one, uh, except for it's not from my play style in terms of being so large, but the switches, the switches I like. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. I'll see you guys in the next video.